In the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, we read the account of Naaman. Naaman, it tells us in verse 1 of 2 Kings 5, was the commander of the army of the king of Syria. He's a man of high position. He was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. This is a man who has won great victories on behalf of his king. He was also a mighty man of valor. Everything about Naaman was fantastic. He was the big man. He was a great commander, had won mighty victories. He was mighty. He was strong. He was powerful. But then it goes on to tell us that he is also a leper. This great, this mighty man has been struck down with this awful disease. And at the time, there was no known cure for leprosy. He's in a desperate situation for all of his pomp, for all of his wealth, for all of the victories that he's won, for all of his might, for all of his strength, for all of his courage. He is afflicted with this terrible, terrible disease. But then a servant girl who he has taken from the land of Israel says to him, there is a prophet in our land who can, who can sort this out for you. He can deal with this. Go to him. And so he goes to Elisha, who is the prophet in Israel at this time. And it tells us here in verse 9, Naaman went with his horses and chariot and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Farpa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. This is a wonderful account of the healing power of God through his prophet Elisha. This man who is afflicted with this incurable disease comes and eventually acts in obedience to the word of God, dips seven times in the river Jordan and is renewed. He is completely healed of his leprosy. It's a wonderful, wonderful account of the healing power of God, but it is so much more than that. In the Old Testament, there are many events, there are many things which foreshadow greater things to come, the things which we see the fulfillment of in the New Testament. And so it is with Naaman's leprosy. We see Naaman, a man afflicted with this terrible, terrible disease. Leprosy in the scriptures is a type of sin, of man's sinful nature. If somebody has leprosy, it's not always visible to begin with. It's in the body, but the symptoms are not necessarily displaying themselves. We're not at the stage where the skin is covered with sores and ulcers and where uh, extremities are beginning to, to lose their feeling or even um, be lost altogether. Not at that stage, but the body still contains leprosy. This is the difference between what we regard as sin and what sin truly is, because we see sin as the, the acts of sin, the adultery, the fornication, the murder, the envy, the lying, the cheating, the violence, the hatred, all of those things we see as the as sin. But they are not sin itself. These are simply the symptoms of sin. And there are some people in this world who are displaying those symptoms more than others. But the scripture is very clear. All have sinned and fall short of the glory 
of God. So even though somebody might be living a seemingly good life, a life where they're helping people, a life where they're doing wonderful things, sin is still present in their body. And the scripture tells us that the wages of sin is death. There's no way out of it. If you have sin and all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, then the end result is death, not just mortal death, but what the Bible calls the second death, that eternal separation from God in the lake of fire. Anyone whose name is not found written in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. So leprosy is a terrible thing. But it is also a foreshadowing of something even more terrible, and that is sin in humankind. But then we come to his reaction to what Elisha tells him to do. Elisha gives him one simple instruction. Go and wash in the River Jordan seven times and you will be clean. There's something wonderful in this, and that is this. The gospel message that we present only points one way to salvation, only one way of getting free from this disease of sin with which mankind is afflicted. There is only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is only through Jesus. It's only through his redemptive work on the cross when he bought us back from the power of sin, when his blood cleansed us from all unrighteousness it's only through that that we can have access to God and be reconciled to God as our Heavenly Father there is only one way the wonder of this account is that Naaman gets angry about it he says what, what do you mean there's only one way surely I can go to other rivers surely I can do something more befitting of who I am of my greatness why would you go and have me dip myself in this river there are better rivers and he misses the point completely. This is a man who already has a death sentence. This is a man whose body is already becoming riddled with this disease called leprosy. There is no way out. And yet, when he is told of a way out which God graciously provides for him, he gets angry about it because it doesn't befit his status. His pride gets in the way of him hearing the message eventually he does humble himself at the advice of those who talk to him but to begin with there's that reaction why should i go and dip in this river why is that the only way he misses the point before this there was no other way this is one of the beauties of the gospel message in fact it's one of the greatest beauties of the gospel message and that is that we even have a gospel message to proclaim at all. God could have seen man in his rebellion and just got rid of him. Just said, okay, you're going to die. That's it. I wipe my hands of you. You've rebelled against me. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The glory of the gospel message is that we even have a gospel message to proclaim in the first place. We were condemned. We were lost. We were dead in our sins and our transgressions. Jesus put it like this in John chapter 3. Verse 17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. He who believes in him is not condemned. God could have written us off, but instead he gave us away. Instead of 
thinking, I can sort this out myself. We need to come to the one who has provided one way. And we need to understand this because this is the wonder of the gospel message. Without Jesus, there is no way. But God, in his love toward mankind, even in their rebellion against him, even in their fallenness, has, because of his love for us, provided a way. This is the glory of the gospel message, that there even is a way at all. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the wonderful message we proclaim. That God loved us so much that he made the way. So let us, if we're not in the way, come and walk in the way. His name is Jesus. The way, the truth and the life.